Hello, my lovelies. I have, I think it's a fascinating wee subject to talk to you about tonight, uh, tonight, and that is relatively new in estate planning, and it is planning for genetic material with rapid development technology in cryopreservation, in vitro fertilization, and genetic editing. We have more and more options for preserving our genetic material. So what happens to eggs, sperm, embryos when we die? So right now different states have very, very different laws and jurisdictions. Some consider this material just simple personal property like, like jewelry. And other jurisdictions have taken on the ethical considerations and have rigid rules about ownership of the material and when it can be used and when it must be destroyed. Some states have also taken on the rights of the future born children. Often they can inherit from parents who died before they were even conceived. So if you have genetic material in your estate planning, you have to, at a minimum, make sure that the executor is on notice that the genetic material exists and where it is stored. You also have to appoint an agent with authority to direct any future use of the material and any children born from the genetic material who will have legal rights, especially inheritance rights from those biological parents, um, they have to be born to preserve those rights within two years, just so that we don't have 15, 20 years down the line, children being born when it would be impossible to go back when the estates of the parents would long have been distributed. So the bottom line is any estate planning for genetic material will consider the wishes of the deceased and the legal documents they have put in place, the rights of the future conceived, and the responsibility of the surviving family members. Thanks for listening. Talk to you again tomorrow on my ninth day. Thanks and bye.